more news is coming out regarding the now council plans for Bray Wyatt's run in 2023. So we'll see what's new there. We'll also check out the latest for Liv Morgan, Rhea Ripley, and more. Let's start things off with this new information about the scrap plans for Bray Wyatt. There was a point there a few weeks after Bray Wyatt first returned in 2022 where it seemed like something big was on the way for him. Bray started teasing new characters, introducing Uncle Howdy, Alexa Bliss even started getting pulled back into his world again. It just seemed like we were really going to see something major come together there for Bray Wyatt and everyone that was involved with him. But due to that injury from Bray Wyatt, we unfortunately ended up seeing nothing at all come from those months of teases and hints. But Fightful is now reporting on what those original plans would have looked like if Bray Wyatt stayed medically cleared to compete. Their report claims that Bray Wyatt was in fact set to lead a new faction during those early and mid months of 2023. But this is an idea that a lot of fans suspected right from the very start of Bray's return run. And it looks like that suspicion from fans was correct. Bray Wyatt's story was all leading to him forming and leading a new faction. Eric Young was allegedly set to be one of those new members of the faction behind Bray Wyatt and Uncle Howdy. That's interesting because back when that last episode of the Firefly Funhouse aired in February, a lot of fans did claim that the voice heard right before the game show portion of the episode did sound like Eric Young's voice. So now knowing that the plans were in motion for Eric Young to join Bray and Howdy in early 2023, it's possible that the fans were right. And it very well could have been Eric's voice in that Firefly Funhouse episode from earlier this year. The report also said that WWE was once again thinking of going through with the idea of Bray's puppets coming to life. Bray's puppets coming to life has been a pitch floating around WWE creative ever since 2019, and it's come up several times over the years, but they never pulled the trigger on that idea. The closest we've come to seeing that idea to life was with Extreme Rules and the Royal Rumble, where the live action versions of Bray Wyatt's puppets were in the arena with him. But apparently it looks like there was some more plans to possibly unmask those live action versions of the puppets and have them be portrayed by other WWE superstars. The report also claims that the plans were in place for Alexa Bliss to join the faction as well and reunite with Bray Wyatt. But those plans were obviously derailed by both Bray's injury and the fact that Alexa's pregnancy rules her out of the ring for the rest of the year. So judging by this report, it looks like the core of this new faction would have consisted of Bray Wyatt, Uncle Howdy, Eric Young, and Alexa Bliss. It looks like that's where everything was headed before the injury took place. The last episode of the Firefly Funhouse from February is even more interesting to go back and look at now because it does seem like Bray was hinting at all those faction members during that episode, possibly meaning that it was real close to happening. You had Bray Wyatt teasing his own secret, possibly referring to his new alter ego or monster. Then you had the box that Alexa Bliss used to revive the Fiend in 2021, and even a woman's voice yelling out for help, possibly a reference to Alexa Bliss. Then Uncle Howdy even had a few interesting lines there. Then what fans think was Eric Young's voice could be heard during some of the narrative for the game show. It looks like all the pieces were right in front of us teasing this four member faction back in February, but we didn't even know it. So it's extremely unfortunate we didn't get a chance to see where this faction could have gone. It's going to be impossible to see this faction in 2023 because Alexa Bliss won't be back till 2024 at the earliest and Eric Young was just actually granted his release from WWE. So it'll be interesting to see what Bray Wyatt's second return in under a year would look like with these plans now being scrapped. Considering he's been away for so long, a lot of fans are expecting Bray Wyatt to reinvent himself again and return with another potential new direction. He'll still have Uncle Howdy by his side, but if the plan is for him to try and start up that faction again, he'll need to fill those spots with completely different superstars this time around. It was another big week for WWE continuing to tease Rhea Ripley's program for SummerSlam. 
Rhea Ripley started having issues with Raquel and Liv after the two of them stopped Rhea from beating down Natalia. And since then, Rhea has been out for revenge on Liv and Raquel. A few weeks ago, Rhea Ripley gave Liv and Raquel a verbal warning to stay out of her business. Well, this week, Rhea Ripley gave the both of them a physical warning as well. During a backstage interview before their title defense, Liv Morgan and Raquel Rodriguez had their interview interrupted by Rhea Ripley. Rhea headbutted Liv Morgan and attacked Raquel's knee. So, this was a moment that a lot of fans called and saw coming. With the way Rhea developed an issue with Liv and Raquel and how they had a tag team title defense coming up, a lot of fans were expecting Rhea to impact the outcome of that women's tag team titles match in some way. And that's exactly how it unfolded. The champions, Liv and Raquel, both walked into the match a bit wounded from Rhea's attacks on them earlier in the night, and it ended up costing them the women's tag team titles to Sonya Deville and Chelsea Green. Liv and Raquel's second reign as tag team champions ended just after 16 days. The titles have changed hands multiple times within the last few weeks alone. Every time a new team wins the titles, everyone thinks that they could be the team that re-establishes the title. But that's almost never the case, and each reign always ends within a few weeks of the last one. But the cycle continues. Everyone is now hoping that Sony Deville and Chelsea Green will be the team that truly puts the women's tag team titles back on the map. It was an emotional win for both Sonya and Chelsea because it was their first WWE Championship won in their careers. So we got the new women's tag team champions, but it looks like a lot of story is still coming from this loss for Liv Morgan and Raquel. Although Liv Morgan has been there the entire time, WWE has been heavily teasing the idea of Rhea versus Raquel taking place at SummerSlam. Even with Rhea's backstage attack, it was Raquel who ended up taking the bigger blow than Liv Morgan. But in the closing moments of Raw, we did get some progression to Rhea's story with Liv and Raquel. Liv came out to ringside to try and attack Rhea Ripley as a form of revenge. Liv Morgan was extremely heated after the tag team title loss, and she knows that the only real reason why they lost was due to what Rhea did to Raquel. Everyone knows how hard Liv fought to return fast from that shoulder injury. They recaptured tag team titles. Everything was going smooth, only for them to end up losing the titles two weeks later because of Rhea Ripley. So that's why Liv was extremely heated and tired to attack Rhea Ripley. But after Raw ended, fans in attendance said that Liv received some medical attention that was focused on her arm and wrist area. And then Liv Morgan was spotted outside the arena greeting fans with an arm sling on. So that itself is very concerning and doesn't appear to be a storyline injury. So they were definitely setting something up there between Rhea, Raquel, and Liv. Fans were already going crazy with some interesting theories. Some fans wondering if this big loss would send Liv Morgan over to the Judgment Day. Rhea has been inviting Liv Morgan to join the Judgment Day ever since 2022, and said on multiple occasions that she'll be willing to team up with Liv again if she joins the faction. So that's one idea fans were playing with. Other fans were wondering if this tag team title loss would make either Liv or Raquel truly crack and cross the line with each other. But Liv's legitimate injury is what really throws a curveball into this plan. If Liv can't go, it'll be interesting to see how they readjust the direction of where they were headed there. Raquel does have a storyline knee injury, but it seems like all signs still point to her facing Rhea Ripley at SummerSlam. And if Liv truly is hurt, Maybe that's something that Rhea can mention and boast about. And maybe it's Raquel who's sticking up for Liv now. But what are your thoughts on today's stories? Leave your comments below. Don't forget to subscribe with all notifications on and leave a like if you enjoyed. Thanks for watching, guys.